Bye. All right, we are back, everybody, on open line here on a Thursday night, already uh, halfway through as we talk with Steve Ferreira, um, who is with us, and uh, he is the CEO of Ocean Audit, uh, based in the New York City area, but tonight joining us, so we're so appreciative, from Boston as you're traveling around. Um, I, I want to ask also about, uh, as Christmas approaches and you mentioned that you would have liked to have seen a little more movement on this several months ago what do we tell consumers out there obviously there's going to be a lot of products that just aren't available um, so either order it now and understand that it's not going to be here by the holidays or try to find something else well i can tell the, the view is this um, the retailers such as amazon Target, Walmart, and again, I know it's big box you know, stores and we always want to support all types of clients, all types of size businesses, but I have insight to all the velocity of what's coming in in these containers, the LOL dolls, all the hot toys, right. and I think Amazon, Target, Walmart, and it's not news, right, but I think it's still your best bet to source what you need, but source early because we've had to move the container shipments up so much earlier than normal it's very unusual to see these type of products so delayed now. Right, so yeah, we talk about these big box retailers and I'm sure your Amazons and Walmarts, um, like you said, very sophisticated tracking. They know what they need now, what, they, what can, can hold off, uh, you know. I mean, they're, they're monitoring this all the time. But small businesses, we did a story here just yesterday, uh, a small business owner, a boutique shop here in Nashville, um, the owner said, you know, customers will say, well, when are you gonna get this particular item in? And all she knows is it's, it's on, uh, we know it's on the cargo ship somewhere. So they may not, these small businesses may not have access to, to be able to really specifically track and find out, you know, they're getting broad windows as to when these items might be delivered. Well, I think, I think it's really important to, to share this with your audience that, you know, um, because this is such a container, uh, the shortage of container ships and containers, um, Walmart, Home Depot, Dollar Tree, they've all charted their own vessels. It's the first time we're seeing this in the history of histories really? where Home Depot is chartering an entire container ship or Walmart or Dollar Tree just to get the products in on time. That, that is amazing. And again, that's costing them more money and we're seeing some of that passed along to consumers. We're seeing those prices jump. Believe it or not, some of these uh, retailers are paying fees upwards of 150 to 200 thousand dollars a day for the ocean journey on these charter vessels. And what is the typical? Eight. What is the typical cross Pacific for for a car? How long does that take? I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you. Sure. Well, it depends. I think most of the retailers are trying to get to the West Coast right away. So typically from say, Shanghai to the West Coast, you might be looking at 15 to 18 days normally, but now you have to add 10 to 12 or even double that because of this container getting effect. So it's, a, it's an incredibly uh, expensive uh, journey. And what's happening now is instead of bringing the cargo through the Panama Canal, the ships are stopping in LA. And what does that mean? It means that congestion means that the, the ships, the, the trucks and the rails have to all filter through LA, and that's the choke point, the choke point yeah. right now, Rory. Uh, unbelievable. So the ones that do go down and through the Panama Canal, uh, that then brings them up. They can, you know, stop in Houston, New Orleans, and the Gulf, maybe even go around Florida and up the East Coast, right? Well, the big ships, typically uh, the major ports that uh, you're having the Walmart and the Home Depot uh -huh. cargo discharge on the East Coast would be like Savannah, Charleston, Miami, but certainly in New York, of course, but certainly uh, right now it's all about speed. How do you execute sure, getting sure. cargo from Shanghai to LA to Atlanta as fast as possible? All right, Antonio is joining us on line one. Thanks for holding, Antonio. What's on your mind? Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out now why he's not uh, bringing to the table a lot of these products are made here in the USA at home and they still can't get it to the stores. Uh, yeah. You know, like every time the employees or store asks for a raise, like Kroger's, and Kroger's have brought us a politician to block every raise the employees want. Uh, like $15 an hour, they closed two stores in California because of that. 
and uh, you take beer, for instance. If you can't get beer to the market, it's made local, and a lot of local products are made in the USA. And right here in Tennessee, you can't yeah. even get that down into the stores. Yeah. Something is wrong. Yeah, and I don't understand. I don't understand why he's not responding to no. that. Well, I'm glad because you brought it up. The military Antonio. can. The military can get this stuff to the people. They use for the COVID and everything else. Mm -hmm. So the military can move these products. Okay, that's they a good point. They just don't want to pay them. That's a good point. Um, I didn't even think about the impact this is having even on domestically produced goods because the ripple effect is a lot of those are will be shipped by train or truck and there's a backlog and a shortage right well one of the things that's really interesting is you, I, I was watching the daily mail in the uk and they put a a, 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 a photo of oh major shortages in u.s stores and you know you know what they showed me pictures of it was the it was paper towels, it was Kleenex, it was toilet paper. What they don't realize is that many of those products right are already here. made here. Yeah. So yeah. Antonio's playing spot on. It's it, it's a challenge. Wow, and it's frustrating. Yeah, there's. I, I used to live in Maine, and I know the paper products up there. Uh, it's a big industry up there. Just getting the tail end, just getting these goods and services pr manufactured and, and to uh, where they need to go. All right, uh, Donna has something to share with us. Hey, Donna. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. Anyway, I have a comment. Sure. And I agree with James that we should employ the military, the National Guard, mm -hmm. to um, help with that. And if families would not spend money this year on Christmas and just spend money or, or give money or have dinner with their families, mm -hmm. then how is that going to affect the, the economy? Yeah, good uh, point. I mean, you, yeah, good point. I mean, if you don't, if you aren't able to get the products that you want, maybe some people are just deciding, you know what, we're going to tighten the budget a little bit and we're just going to do something else, spend family time, maybe travel or something like that. How does that impact uh, companies? You know, they obviously want people to, to buy their products. Well, you know, all, the point was really well made about the military. There's been a movement recently that maybe the uh, Marines or the military or the Navy should start policing the uh, the, the, the West Coast uh, container uh, courts because of the way that uh, the, the container ships are queued out there. So there is possibly some, some merit to having some kind of uh, uh, military uh, impact right. to help monitor container getting. The other point about I want to make about spending is that, you know, I just did a study uh, last month, Amazon's uh, logistics division had 9,000 ocean containers come in. This month, 10,000. Pretty low value, medium value items. So somebody's still buying this product. Right, right. interesting. I, I want to go back to what you mentioned about the Navy or whatever. Uh, and, and we talked about that oil spill and the California legislator who, who wants to maybe regulate this. One of the issues is typically, uh, normally, as we've mentioned, there may be one or two or three cargo ships in the queue off the coast of LA or Long Beach, those ports waiting to come in. And there are designated nautical areas for them to kind of park their ships for sure. But now we've got, you know, 50, 60, 70 ships. How are they managing that? Who's in charge of that? And obviously we had the oil spill and it could have been caused by an anchor. Um, there's a lot underwater there that needs to be protected, a lot of cables and pipelines and whatnot. Who's overseeing all this? Well, typically that defaults to the uh, Coast Guard, Corey, Rory, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, who manages that. But I think the audience should know that there are some great tools online. Uh, you can just go to Google and say, I want to Google um, um, real-time satellite of uh, container ships in, uh, sitting in L.A., uh, you know, I think it's really vital that uh, uh, the consumer understands just how important it is. And remember, uh, the uh, ports can only handle so many vessels a day. So it's really the Coast Guard's ability to say, okay, vessel number one, you're next into the port. Vessel number two, you're next into the port. Right. So there, there is a method to the madness. It just happens at, at a very slow pace, unfortunately. And uh, some of these ships that have to sit out there for days and days, are, do they have enough supplies for their crew? You know, we're not used to, you know, maybe being on the, sh the ship. Do they have food and, and all of the products that the crew needs as they're sitting and waiting, right? 
It's a great point. One of the ships I was tracking recently sat out in the uh, Orange County coastline right outside LA for over 20 days before it was brought into port. Now, of course, uh, uh, vessel owners are taking consideration of the the, 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 seat, the, the mariners on those vessels. Yeah. And there's always resupply vessels that yeah, can pull right, alongside right. of these vessels and resupplies. Uh, just, just so many issues. You also mentioned, I want you to share with the viewers, something about a Walmart shipment, a huge, one of the biggest you've seen, right? Well, I, I think that, you know, I one of the things I like to do is I kind of like to tease my audience, uh, you know, what's, what's happening in Walmart for Black Friday. So I was the original guy that kind of gave the Black Friday uh, circular away before it existed because of my ability to look inside the containers. And I was remarking that I just saw on a Walmart shipment over 400 containers of television, uh, televisions, Roku televisions, valued at about $25 million coming into the port of LA. So I'm going to guess that, <laughs> that Walmart's going to have the Roku 60-inch yeah, uh, as, uh, a as a Black Friday. big Black before. Friday special that they're pushing. Yeah, and it doesn't surprise me. They always have uh, uh, some sort of television ready to go. But, the, you know, they're preparing ahead of time for sure. So that's good. We'll be watching when those circulars come out. We'll say, Steve knew. All right, we're going to take another break, uh, everybody. Take your phone calls, too. Wide open lines if you'd like to call in. 737-PLUS. Anything you're waiting for that you've ordered and you're frustrated? I'll tell you about my experience after this.